What's up guys, I'm Crimson Thunder here. Welcome back to this Let's Play of Sentinels of the Multiverse, the video game. Last time we ended up battling, we ended up taking down the army of Chairman, Operative, and the huge army of thugs at the Pike Industrial Complex. We are now complete with all of the Rook City villains. And, bef and the next pieces that we're going to be going into will be the Shattered Timelines. But before we do that, we got a special little, little villain called Misinformation from Mini Pack 2. Oh god, I hate her so much. Okay, so we're gonna go fight her. And we're actually going to fight her in the Freedom Tower. Because... She, uh, because we're probably going to need the, um, we need to fight, uh, we need to fight her in a fairly good environment because she actually is a lot, she might have her beautiful sexy charm, but don't be fooled, she actually will kill you. So, and the, and this is best done with only three characters. I absolutely would bring Parks along. Because this, she's actually the nemesis of misinformation. I am also going to bring along the America's newest legacy, which is um, which is the which is the daughter of the regular variant. And I think it would also be best if we introduce Captain Vesmic. He has constructs in his deck, which equip onto other characters, which various things will happen. So we'll take on misinformation with uh, with Parse, America's newest legacy, and Captain Cosmic in the Freedom Tower. Let's fight. You, why are you looking at me that way? I'm just an innocent assistant. You are an innocent assistant in the same way I am a simple programmer. Misinformation. Oh boy. Misinformation. She starts with the Demir office worker side up. Cards are revealed from the villain deck until one diversion card is revealed and put into play. All of the reveal cards are shuffled back into the deck. During the game play, at the start of the villain turn, if there are two or more clues in play, misinformation flips. At the end of the villain turn, X ongoing or incoming cards are destroyed, where X is the number of diversion cards in play. So this is going to be pretty interesting. Her deck consists of diversions and clues for the, uh, for the most part. And clues and diversions do quite a lot of d uh, distractions for these heroes. So we got explosion in the lab. At the end of the villain turn, each player with three or more cards of it must destroy one of their cards. At the start of the villain turn, one player may discard their entire hand to destroy this card. That's never good. But I'm not gonna get rid of pass. Let's actually we can we can discard Captain Cosmic's hand just because of the fact that he can play cards from his deck with his power. Missing resources. Reveal the top card of the deck. Every uh each player discards every card that shares the reveal cards keywords. Discard that reveal card. I would absolutely, I would definitely do this with Captain Cosmic because like, there is a chance that he'll reveal a construct, and no other player in this, no other hero in this game has anything um, of constructs in Captain Cosmic. Uh, what do you know? So nothing else gets discarded. And the one thing with misinformation, she does not have any hit points. 
in order to get her to be able to defeat her is that you must get the uh, you must get her to flip first. So let's go out with the critical multiplier. So let's just take this to be the um, the setup phase. All right, let's go on with the danger sense. This will make a legacy immune to all damage from environment cards. So we have no pa we have no hands, so we're going to reveal energy bracer. This will be best used to parse because of the nemesis. Autonomous blade. Now gapped and cosmic. Alright. Now Captain Cosmic. Most of his cards, as I said before, are, are made up with constructs, which are tar hero targets that are played next to other p next to other heroes, and they all have 4 HP, which if there's anything that hits the, the hero target with the lowest HP, usually these do get hit. So, like this autonomous blade. This particular one makes the first time the hero uh, that a hero target deals damage each turn. This target deals one target two energy damage. And the one next to Parse, Energy Bracer, reduces damage dealt to that hero target by one. So this isolated hero, when this card enters play, put it next to the hero card with the most cards in play. That hero and that hero's cards cannot affect or be affected by a, a hero cards or, or effect from another deck. This is probably just best to parse because this will screw her the, uh, over the least. Now I'm going to go Exosensory Awareness. This will reveal the top three cards of a villain deck, discard one of them, and put the other two cards of the deck in any order, and you can shuffle it. I need clues, so we'll get rid of this diversion. We'll put... Let's actually put the suspicious malfunction. At the start of the villain turn, each of the players may destroy any of their equipment cards. Then if it, then each hero target deals with the 3 minus X lightning damage, or X is the number of equipment cards destroyed this turn. And there's no need to shuffle. Now, with the Freedom Tower, this is by far the most friend hero-friendly environment in this entire game. This came from Vengeance, and the only dangerous thing you have to worry about is his entry point. This is where the, the villains start attacking the Freedom Tower. A lot of, the, a lot of these do various things, where, where in this case, Caspit's Playground, which is also known as Unity. All hero ongoing cards are also equipment cards, and other ver and very other various things, but they will not hurt anybody. Next evolution, and I'll skip powers because I, because misinformation can cannot be hurt. Autonomous blade will go on to legacy. Then I'm going to use Captain Cosmic to put the cosmic weapon on himself. Dindra Vitality Conduit. Now we have the environment turn. We have Training Simulator. At the start of the villain turn, move a tar villain target from the villain trash into play, which is not always the best. Which is uh, not always that bad. Now we got Suspicious Malfunction. There are no diversion cards, and there's no equipment cards. Recompile. I'm going to discard all three of my cards and Barsa automatically buff herself because of the isolated hero. I'll draw six cards for an multiplier, gauge, quick calculation, impossible shot, segmentation fall, and updated intel. Now I'm going to go exosensory awareness. No more. We don't want diversionary tactics. We can get isolated hero out there, because that's not gonna 
That's the one that'll screw us over the least. Superhuman durability won't do anything. Skip powers. Leaf in the front. Valtteri Conduit will go to Captain Cosmic since he's the most squishy. Fabrication will put Potent Disruption. I'll add that to my hand. And Sustained Influence. Cat stuck in a tree will and will go on to the field. Race Arsenal. At the start of the environment turn, each player may discard a card. If all active heroes uh, draw a card this way, destroy this card. And when she flips, she becomes the revealed saboteur. At the start of the villain turn, a clue card is destroyed. If it occurs, each deal deals itself to sonic damage. The first time that a hero deals damage to misinformation each turn she deals that target one psychic damage at the end of the villain turn misinformation deals the one hero target with the lowest HP two psychic damage each so now they've ended up figuring out that she was uh, causing all kinds of problems so now she's got 45 hit points and now all you gotta do is beat the crap out of her so I'll destroy this suspicious malfunction everybody's gonna get hit Good. Isolated hero. Destroy the conduit blade. Now we now we have a fight on our hand. Right, snap decision. Exosensory awareness because we want to make sure that we don't get anything bad. You'll have having like another reality's debt. Get this. What doesn't kill you? And we're not gonna shuffle a deck. Strategic analysis. We're going to take her down to prevent her from playing anything. And we're going to hit misinformation. She'll retaliate. And then she'll hit her for another two. Sustained influence. This will. When a construct card is destroyed, you can destroy this card to put that construct back into play. We're gonna fabricate another conservation of energy. I get to destroy any number of construct cards. I can either draw X number of cards or play X number of cards, which is the number of ones destroyed this way plus one. Let's get rid of the cosmic. We'll put it back. We'll put it back into play. We'll healed by totally conduit. And we're going to Nope. I didn't I didn't mean to uh, do that. What I meant What I meant to do was draw three cards. So he's actually got has a hand again. Then I'll draw one card per turn. I'll start crest. Alright, let's have parse draw a card and legacy draw a card. Legacy's landing pad. This increases damage dealt by the target with the highest HP by 1 and reduces damage dealt to the target with the lowest HP by 1. The highest HP is information and the lowest HP is the energy bracer. And we'll destroy the isolated hero off a of, off of parse. Everyone's going to hit themselves with Sonic. The energy bracer is considered the lowest. Okay, let's discard data mining. Buff parse. The critical multiplier. Synatic analysis on parse. We're going to play recompile to discard gauge to pump parse's damage. Updated intel. 
on Barsa's damage. And segmentation fall. But Parse's damage. And since everybody's gonna hit themselves, we're not gonna we're not gonna wait to um, we're not gonna wait to uh, deal more damage. I'm going to start shooting this information. Takedown's destroyed. I'm going now Thawker for four. She will retaliate. Draw a card. Now I'm going to zap her with my eye lasers. Draw one card. I'm going to play Harsh Offense. I reveal the top three cards of my deck. Captain Cosmic deals one target X energy damage where X is the is twice the number of constructs that are revealed this way. This card all cards revealed this way. There are, there's two of them, so I'm going to hit misinformation for five. She'll retaliate. Then I'm going to use the inner, the cosmic weapon to hit misinformation. I'll have Captain Cosmic and Legacy draw one card. Entry point. Put this on the training simulator. Now. Now her misinformation is going to increase her damage by one. Isolate heroes destroyed, and everybody hits themselves for two. What doesn't kill you will increase damage dealt by villain targets by one. And at the start of the villain turn, if there are no divergent cards to play, play the top card of the deck. Alright, let's finish this job. Parse is going to recompile. Discarding up to one targeting arrow. Two targeting arrows. I hope if Polius plays is, uh, is watching this when he gets a chance, he's gonna love what I'm about to do. So I am now going to play, you guessed it, but impossible shot. This is going to do 12 damage to her, and she is going to be she is going to not be considered the lowest, so she takes the normal damage, which is irreducible anyway. She then falls. And we had defended the Freedom Tower. And they put her in a straight jacket. And misinformation has been officially thunderstruck. Well, this is a fairly um, difficult villain if you if you take this on with more than three. And you also need to make sure that you're careful how you play playing this out. But in this case, we got fairly lucky, and the fact that we also ended up going into a fairly friendly environment, like the Freedom Tower. In terms of the fun and all of the stuff here at Sentinels of the Multiverse, I am Crimson Thunder. See you next time, where we begin our attack on the Shattered Timelines. See you later. <laughs>